Welcome to Spa Francorchamps. We are here for the fifth and penultimate round of the 2021 Michelin Le Mans Cup. One month after racing at Le Mans, our gentlemen drivers and young endurance talents are ready to tackle another legendary circuit here in Belgium. Now this could be a title deciding race, so let's check out the current leaderboard. In GT3, the champions, the number eight Iron Lynx car, look well placed to retain their title. If they score two points more than the Porsche Centrum over a Zurich A by TFT machine, they will take the title here in Spa. Conversely, Nicholas Lloydweiler leads the driver's title race over the changing lineup in the number eight Iron Lynx machine. I obviously have to try to defend uh, the uh, this position as much as possible. The decisive factor is going to be the traffic of the P3s. A DNF is not allowed, but also this true uh, for the others. In the number nine Iron Lynx machine, Dorian Pan could be the first woman to ever win an endurance racing title. It's been superb. We've had great speed from the beginning of the season, haven't made any mistakes. We've taken three podiums in four races. I'm really still hoping to win before the end of the season. I'll do my best to win the title. I'm uh, very loyal to this track, one can say, and I obviously love it. It's one of my favorites. Go through radio for the first time, you take a big breath. It's amazing. I love these kind of circuits. I'm just going to try and enjoy this weekend to the maximum and bring home the title. Mathematically, 12 teams are still LMP3 contenders. However, the title is likely to go to one of the top five. This will be our fifth season in Le Mans Cup. Uh, second, second, second and third. It's new to be at this position at this stage of the season. Colin and Tony have been doing really well here in the past. We just need to go out and carry on what we've been doing in Le Mans Cup for the last four seasons. We're under a lot of pressure. United and Rinaldi are like really breathing down our necks, so it's close. We've got two cars in the top five and there are only 22 points splitting those top five cars. Clearly, it's an advantage to have two cars that have got a chance of winning a championship. We'll keep on doing what we've been doing. It's, it's great to see how Jerry's come on through the season. At the end of the day, you've got to make sure you do the best job you can. The drivers do, the team does uh, with regard to strategy. And ultimately, that's why he's uh, well and truly in the title fight. We are from our side really happy with our position. We try to do a good job. We missed the first victory, but still we scored the points every race weekend and I hope we can go forward like this. And everybody won't win. Our focus is just to make happy our customers, you know. And in the end, if we can win something, for sure everybody's happy.
we're going to push for it. Mo is doing a great season. The pace uh, improved his pace a lot, and uh, hopefully this this car can be on the podium of the championship. Mo, since he started in motorsport, is improving every time he's going out, and uh, he's really pushing for it. He's very committed, especially this year with so many cars, so many good drivers around. It's a great uh, it's a great season he had so far. Obviously, the two last races are very important as well. Now follow me and let's find out more about the Rinaldi Racing Team. Fourteen Rinaldi Racing's been a front runner in GTs with victories at both the Spa and Nurburgring 24 hours. And last month they raced in the Le Mans 24 hours for the very first time in GTE Am. Last year they expanded into LMP3 in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. 2020 was for learning. 2021's target is to win. We want to win the championship for sure. We have great drivers, great lineup. Alex is a really strong Bronx driver, lots of experience. I think we improved a lot from last season to this season. I think the team improved a lot. I think everybody learned the car. I must say I was really safe on braking because I don't want to destroy the tire. We are working a long year with him together also in the GT and he tried to adapt with the P3 and he enjoy a lot. And for sure with Nico Varone we have a really nice young driver and we try to do our best to bring them forward. I learned a lot from Nico because he's coming from single-seater. Uh, I'm coming from GT, so the driving style on GT is, is a little bit different. This combination makes it a good team. The team works well together. It's kind of family character in the team. Everybody knows each other. It's a small group and yeah, we just like racing. That's our passion and that's where the success comes from. It's a family where well, we are kind of a big family. I'm enjoying the whole day, even we are not driving, I'm staying here with the team and, and talking with the team. We lose together and we win together. Most people I know quite long. I think this is giving the spirit uh, to be successful. The team is located less than 200 kilometers from here, so it's kind of home track and we're also looking forward to Portimao then at the end of the season and hope to bring it home. The competitor field is super, super strong here. Of course, there's a bit of pressure because the start is also directly into the in the first corner in the hairpin, and it is a good overtaking spot. We are really looking forward to a podium this race. I wasn't expected to go quite so well here, but the car was perfect. It's been great to earn some extra championship points for the team. So now we're focused on the race, try and make a good driver change and see how it goes. We are ready for race five of the Michelin Amon Cup here at Spa. Pole position, the Ligier of Phoenix Racing. Hamza of Eger will start. Finn Gersic set the time. And the Iron Lynx number eight Ferrari sits on pole in GT3. So here we are, ready for the penultimate race of the season. Red lights are on, a long hold, and away we go. Outside of the front row, Torsten Kratz. W2M powered by Phoenix goes past Hamza of Eger. There's the sound of contact on row two or three and out very wide goes Kratz, a spinner further down the hill as well. There's several cars still at the hairpin. And there's the 32 United Autosports car, that got a second hit. Jack Wolf there as well, Alden Goodmanson, Klaus Abel and the Frickadelli car. Our race leader then is, well it's the silver and blue car and that is Anton Docker in second place, Torsten Kratz. 
From the outside of the front row, the grid car number 11, then the pole man, Hamza Avega in third position. Alexander Matchell in fourth place. Little gap back from the lead quartet to the rest of the field. Now who is leading in GT3? Should be Gabriele Lancieri. At the chicane, Lancieri, number eight Iron Lynx Ferrari, is our GT3 leader. Nicholas Lloydweiler, the Porsche Centrum Obra Zurich A by TFT Porsche in second place, car number two. And keeping tabs on the number eight Iron Lynx Ferrari. Don't forget, the Iron Lynx car only really needs to finish in front of the Porsche to take the title here. Battle for six in LMP3 with the gold highlights. That's Tony Wells for Nielsen Racing chasing down Eric de Donker, the Motorsport 98 machine. Vital race for Nielsen, our championship leaders. Great start, Tony, great start. Coming up the hill, LMP3 battle for 12th position. Julian Jerby for Team Virage, the orange car pulling out of the slipstream of Torsten Jung and goes by the first of the two Mulner Motorsport cars. Andres Latour right behind in 18, the sister machine. Ah, change for third place overall. Alexander Matchell for Rinaldi Racing, ahead now of Hamsa Avega, the Phoenix car. They're liking that in the garage. Cool Racing still leads from WTM, powered by Phoenix. So the 1-2 remains the same. Change though for third position and Rinaldi Racing really getting their head around these LMP3 cars. Here's your race leader, Anton Ducat for Cool Racing. 2.3 seconds ahead of Torsten Kratz. Kratz started in second place to count on row two of the grid. He took advantage of the confusion at the start to jump in front and he's keeping that advantage alive. Crucial battle in GC3, the number eight Iron Lynx car. They are so close to winning the title. Gabriel Lancieri ahead of Nick Leutweiler, who is also very close in the Porsche to taking the driver's title. Oh, and a big swerve, what's going on? The number 18, that's the Mulder Motorsport car of Aussie, Andres Latour, he's just recovering from the spin there. Both the GT3 leaders missing, but look, unfortunately he's coming back down the inside of Nick Leutweiler, who has to break hard coming down into Eau Rouge but he avoids the disaster that was looming. Across the start finish line, another tight battle with the orange nose, John Brownson for DKR Engineering. Pulling out though is Jacques Wolf, racing Spirit of Le Mans. That car qualified strongly, but was caught up in the very first corner here at La Source. Now up to 17th place. That's a long recovery drive. Jean Gerby again on the attack for Team Virage, this time Pietro Peccinini, the TS Corsa car, loses 10th place. Trouble for John Brownson, he was chasing Rob Hodes for 8th place. And what happened here? Oh, it wasn't Hodes at all, it was 32. And that is the recovering Daniel Schneider, the United Auto Sports car was facing the wrong way at the hairpin, but he's tagged around the DKR machine. Race leader Antoine Tocard for Cool Racing now 8.6 seconds clear. The gap continues to grow as he comes by the delayed John Brownson. Headlights are flashing. Will he send it down the inside? No, he's been cautious in traffic and wisely so. Chasing the Virage car of Rob Hodes is the 23 United Auto Sports machine of John Schauerman. Gets it in too deep and too fast. There's the team boss, Richard Dean, Charlotte Lumley, the PR, can't believe it. Oh, trouble for Nick Lloydweiler. Porsche Centrum over to XA by TFT. But they need to finish ahead of the Iron Lynx car to keep the championship alive for the team's title. And Lloydweiler wants a good race for the driver's title. What happens here? He just takes too much of the curb on the inside. And around he goes, no one else involved, but it seems there's no damage done. Oh, who's that going backwards? That's a Mulder Motorsport car on the exit of Piff Paff. Got far too much kerb. It looks as though that's Andres Latour, the Aussie. Yes, it is. Well, he's having a busy time of it, isn't he? Three, two, one, 
Full course yellow deployed. Full course yellow deployed. Box, box, box. Patrice Lafargue, late call, straight into the pits. Great reaction from the team. Close to the halfway mark, everybody will be coming in. Here's the race leader, Anton Ducat, handing over to Josh Skelton. And from third, Rinaldi Racing, Alexander Matchell wriggles out of the door and in goes the Argentine, Nicolas Barone. United are ready as well, 23, John Schaumann. Door open. See Wayne Boyd waiting to leap in as soon as the seat is vacated. Hauling Charman out. Full course yellow we moved. Full course yellow we moved. Back up to speed we go. 66 in third place for Rinaldi. 22 for United. A lap down. The leaders have stopped. One hour down. One hour to go. Trouble at Redion. Lots of tyre smoke. That looks like the Black Falcon car. Somebody else going slowly there. Is that the Grain Market car? Let's take a look here. Black Falcon in the middle. That's doing our Munding. And the Grain Market car just makes contact in the middle of Redion. Huge looping spin. That won't have done the tyres any good. Driver change for the Iron Dames. That's Manuela Gosner strapping in teammate Dorian Pat. Oh, that's United 32 car, Andy Merrick off in the gravel. What's happened here? Drive through penalty car 66 for causing a collision with car 32 at T7. Three, two, one, full course yellow deployed, full course yellow deployed. They're going to have to crane the United car out of the way. Andy Merrick walks away, but it does give anybody who hasn't stopped an opportunity for a full course yellow pit stop now. Three, two, one, full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. Straight back up to speed, car number five, Finn Gersitz for Phoenix Racing, and he needs to be because he's got Matt Bell right behind him. This is the battle for fourth place, 30 in front. That's the Fricadelli Racing car. Axel Jeffries has taken that over from Klaus Abelin around the outside, goes Gersitz, and Matt Bell follows as well in the 69 cool racing car, and Axel Jeffries stays out of the way. Up the camel straight, Matt Bell with the racing line. On the inside though, Finn Gersitz, he's gonna have to be brave, not that brave. Matt Bell sweeps around the outside into Lacom. He's up to fourth position. The 69 cool racing car pushing on hard. Dimitrion Jalbert for Edex Sports. That car in 10th place now, having started in the penultimate position on the grid. Don't forget they made that really late call to get him into the pits, battling with the 23 United car again in traffic. And Wayne Boyd keeps the United car's nose just in front. This is the battle for 10th place. Number eight from Iron Lynx, leading in GT3 from the Porsche Centrum Obra Zurich Zay by TFT Porsche. And as of now, Iron Lynx will be team champions in GT3 at the end of the race if nothing else changes. Somebody smoking heavily, Team Virage. All oh, the cars down on the left rear. That's got to be a puncher, hasn't it? Sasha Lehman limping back to the pits. Long way back. Oh no, suspension collapse, I think. Well, the team will have a lot of work to do. Only half an hour of the race left by the time he gets there. Not sure they're going to get it fixed. Number 11, Leonard Weiss, WTM powered by Phoenix in second place. But look at the difference. Matt Bell has pulled in four seconds in three laps. That is a massive speed differential. The cool racing car number 69 hunting down second place. Car started by Maurice Smith. And there he is with the beard watching nervously from the garage. The GC3 Porsche is in the way and that's really tough for Leonard Weiss. Matt Bell having a look at the inside, not quite enough room into Piff Path, but it's only a matter of time, surely. 20 minutes remain. There's not much chance he's not going to get by before the end of the race. And Leonard Weiss bottled up behind the Porsche still. Across the line they come once more, the battle for second place. Matt Bell looks to the outside, thinks about it, goes again. The long way round, alas, horse, he's going to be brave. There is racing room from Leonard Weiss. That's good, clean racing. Excellent stuff by the WTM powered by Phoenix driver. He could have been very cynical then, 
but side by side, Cool Racing's Matt Bell hands on. They're loving that in the garage, but that was edge of the seat stuff. Fantastic pass for second. Mandatory second stop for Finn Gerzitz, Phoenix Racing. And everybody has to make one. Wayne Boyd is in at United. Matt Bell up behind the number 30 car from Fricadelli. Still trying to work hard on chasing down the leader. Around the outside he goes. The Fricadelli car is a lap behind. Ooh. Axel Jeffries needs to avoid contact when he's a back marker. Nicholas Veroni at Rinaldi Racing in for their final stop. Final stop two for Cool Racing's Josh Skelton. And Cool on target for a 1-2 result here. That's a fantastic race. Final dozen minutes. Last lap of the race for Josh Skelton in the 37 Cool Racing machine. 69 from Cool Racing in second place. What a fantastic day. They are going to be finishing off here at Spa. The penultimate race of the Michelin Le Mans Cup with a Cool Racing 1-2. Josh Skelton will take the chequered flag in the number 37 car. Victorious here at Spa. First win of the season for the 37 car. Maurice Smith there congratulating his garage mate as his teammate Matt Bell weaves jubilantly across the line. And the number 11 car, WGM by Phoenix Racing, they take third. And not by much. Iron Lynx heading to a fourth win of the season with car number eight. And this is the team's title. Winning ahead by seven seconds and enough points. They claim the team's title for the second year in a row. Confirmation, WTM powered by Phoenix joining the Cool Racing duo on the podium. Big points for the number seven, Nielsen Carr and Rinaldi Racing's number 66. And the GT3 winners, Iron Lynx, 21st place overall. Car number eight, tying up that team's title. The driver's crown and both LMP3 titles remain wide open. But what a day of days for Cool Racing, first and second at Spa. We've been very close in the, quite a few rounds, but we've had a little bit of bad luck and a few mistakes. So to get the win, it's, it's amazing. Today the luck was with us. We did the, the mega job. Everything was perfect thanks to Cool Racing and we're going to enjoy that one. Joining Bibendum on the podium. Third place, Torsten Kratz and Leonard advice for WTM powered by Phoenix. Maurice Smith and Matt Bell second for Cool Racing and the winners. Josh Skelton and Antoine Ducar for Cool Racing. <laughs> Strong finish for Nielsen Racing means they have an 11 point advantage over Rinaldi before the season finale in Portimao. There's been a changing cast of characters in the number eight Iron Lynx Ferrari, but they have done enough to take the team's title. We changed driver, but the car eight was always uh, on the top of the class. Uh, our target at the beginning of the year was to win in the team championship. So we are very, very happy. We did uh, all the great work and the team uh, was amazing. Iron Lynx is number nine car, the Iron Dames, Dorian Power and Manuela Gosner claim third. Nicholas Leutweiler and Julian Andlauer second. But victory for Paolo Roberti and Gabriele Lancieri giving the number eight Iron Lynx team the team's title with one race left to run. The GT3 team's champions are crowned, but the runner-up will be decided in the season finale in Portimao next month. The 
2022 Michelin Le Mans Cup Canada has been unveiled and features six events. It begins at Le Castellet in April, round two's at Imola in May, as we head to June and the road to Le Mans is traditional date. The series will start the second half of the season at the Hungara Ring in July. And after a summer break, the Michelin Le Mans Cup travels once more to Spa-Francorchamps in September and the finale again at the ever-popular Portimao in October. So that is it from a gorgeous Spa-Francorchamps. We head to our season finale at the end of October in Portimao in Portugal. We will see you there. <laughs>